that's Philip E. Hardy with Screenwriters Talking Shop. And today I'd like to introduce a new feature called the Screenwriting Industrial Complex. And uh, for those familiar with that terminology, I actually purloined uh, the Military Industrial Complex from former President Dwight D. Eisenhower, who in 1961 made a famous speech, I think to the Congress, where he warned people, beware of the military industrial complex and the buildup of armaments. And companies like aerospace companies and gun manufacturers and munitions companies and bomb factories and the people that were going to lobby to make more of that stuff so that we could make more war on people. And of course, that was at the height of the Cold War in 1961. So now, as of today, I have stolen that expression and now I'm telling you, as of AD 2024, beware of the screenwriting industrial complex. They exist for one purpose, to part you from your hard-earned money. They include pitching, mentoring, uh, script evaluations, consults, mentoring, like I said, AI evaluations, that's the new thing. Get these AI guys that can put 10 pages of your script in or even the whole inch a lot and tell you what you're missing. You missed your inciting incident. You missed your fun and games part. You missed your reversal. You missed your theme. Uh, all these things that you missed, uh, according to the formulas and all the things that gurus have been proliferating out in the screenwriting industrial complex for years. I've been doing this for 12 years and I've seen all kinds of things and I've read all kinds of articles and books and there's uh, tons of ways that people are trying to make money. And many of these people have pretty sketchy backgrounds. There are some people that are uh, pretty top notch at what they do. And there are people that are giving good advice. Don't let me tell you everybody sucks, but you need to do your due diligence. And my thing is you need to gain as much knowledge as you can without spending money on it. Because let's face it, times are hard right now. So it's not easy to part with $300 for a consultation. And I'll get with that in a moment. So the answer is, my answer is, do a lot of reading, absorb what works for you, think creatively and with originality, and don't be scared to march to your own drummer. Just because you read something and somebody says this is so, this is the absolute way to be successful. This is the best way to pitch. This is the best way to write. The beat sheet is the only way that you can have a screenplay that's going to have the Hollywood formula that sells screenplays. And I've heard a lot of other people tell me that they can spot a Save the Cat screenplay a mile away. So again, there's opinions are like the old poop shoot. Everybody has one. So that's why I keep telling people march to your own drummer. So I wanted to address a couple of things today. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is I've been hearing this a lot lately. There's companies out there that are hitting it hard. Like Bidenomics right now, the, the economy is not so great. It has nothing to do with politics, but let's face it. You're paying more at the supermarkets, the gas pump, and everywhere else. So that means you're going to pay more for screenwriting services. Uh, here's an email I got today. Philip, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is a big one I have. So-and-so is now part of our family, the blah, blah, blah family. Again, I'm not going to name names. I'm not out to bag on particular companies. Not really advertently, maybe inadvertently, but I'm telling you, buyer beware. So they're telling me right now they've got an award-winning producer with years of experience, and it's my lucky day. They've done an X amount of movies. I actually looked this person up. They've done a couple of TV shows Ones I must say that I've never heard of, but they have done some TV and films I've never heard of. And now, if I click on for the price, I go over to here, I can buy an hour consultation with this person, and they're going to tell me how I can improve my script and sell it, right? Are they going to buy my script? Or are they going to go out and pitch my script around town? This person's going to go in and get me into a, a Shondaland, or is going to get me over into Bloom House? No. Uh, they're going to tell me what they think is, is wrong with my screenplay. They're going to render an opinion. And as far as I know, this person is not a writer. They're a producer. Again, hasn't produced something that I really give a rat's ass about, but I'm supposed to give them $300. And I'm sure there's those of you in our 
screenwriters talking shop audience that will vehemently disagree and you think that that's a good thing. This this uh, outfit also has uh, sessions where they have pitch practices where you can go online and you can pitch your log line and you can get critiques. And one of those critiques, I was listening to the people I thought that were really less than qualified, in my opinion, to be rendering opinions on other people's log lines, but that's just my opinion. You know, if you haven't sold anything or done any major deals, why in God's name would I give a rat's ass about what your opinion is? And quite honestly, in general, I'm at a point in my life where I've been doing this now for 13 years. I don't give a shit about what your opinion is and my work. You may think my work blows and that's perfectly okay. But you are listening to this tape right now and you're either going to shed it off or you'll continue to listen to me now or hear me later. So... Another thing that kills me is I'm hearing about this big deal that uh, it, these things recycle themselves. And I looked up this screenplay that somebody was saying, it's the greatest thing since toilet paper. It's better than anything I've ever read, read before and anything I've written. So I managed to procure the script very easily online. And I read the first 10 pages of the script. And I got to tell you, it didn't do a damn thing for me. Um, did I think the writing was bad? No, I didn't. Uh, it didn't, wasn't my style of screenplay. It had a lot of scenes and it really didn't give me any character background. I knew nothing really about these people by page 10. And I'm telling you, if I was an industry person and somebody submitted me to the screenplay, I'd stop reading this screenplay by page 10. But here's the thing. How much do I know? Because I looked up a deadline article and this script got a seven-figure offer about five years ago. So uh, the there was a bidding war. I think it was a blacklist favorite. And I've seen these blacklist scripts come and go. They were number one on the blacklist or whatever, and movies were never made. Um, so it doesn't mean that the writers didn't subsequently get into writers' rooms or anything else. But uh, how many six or seven figure deals can you tell me about that have transpired since 2020? You go out, you research that and come back and let me know. Um, that again, the chance of that happening to the average schmo out there is like, I always like to say on our group, you're like a salmon trying to swim up Niagara Falls. You know, uh, my thing is you should be looking for small deals, small indie films to jumpstart your career. If you want to do shorts, that's fine. I'm not a big believer in shorts because you can go out and do the film festival circuit and win awards doing shorts and yeah, 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 yeah. But I think if you can get something, you know, several people that I've seen in our group have gotten films. I just posted two of them. One of them got a film on Tubi and then somebody else has got another film that's going on, some other streaming services. And that's what I'm talking about, getting feature films made and trying to get some attention for yourself because at the very least, you can use those feature films for calling cards. And let me tell you, the one that I've got coming out on November 29th on Prime Fandango, uh, Movie Phone, and several others, I'm promoting the hell out of that. And I'm using that as a leverage tool to get people to look at other things that I'm doing. So that's why I encourage you to go out and try to get smaller independent films made. Stop spending money on consultations. Stop worrying about how many people, how many consultants have read your screenplay. Because you can have a consultant sit there and say, hey, hey, Ron, you should change this, this, and this, and you might want to consider adding this character, pull this character out, do this in the third act. And you know what? Unless somebody wants to buy your screenplay, who gives a rat's ass? My attitude is I write screenplays. I have my process. Uh, like I said, I, I do bullet points. This last screenplay that I just finished and submitted to uh, two producers, haven't heard back from them yet. They may hate it. I did six pages of bullet points based on an original treatment that was submitted. It was very thin on plot points. So I had to create those plot points because that screenplay that I finished wound up becoming 103 pages. And I had to fill in a lot to make the original concept happen. For the other guy who did the treatment, oh yeah, he's... I, I said, give me plot points. This guy gave me characteristics and characters. Did a great job doing that, but didn't give me any storyline. So I had to create that storyline, you know? Giving me a camera shot in the beginning does not create a, a storyline, you dig? You know, what I'm saying is, 
march to your own drummer when you're writing screenplays. If you've written more than five screenplays, you should have an idea on how to do this. You have to have confidence in what you're doing, and you also have to be a good editor, your own editor. I like to tell a story about this uh, blog article that's out there in the ether I read about uh, Harriet Frank Jr. and Irving Ravitch. Uh, they were a married couple. They wrote a lot of great films, including The Long Hot Summer, HUD, the Paul Newman film directed by Martin Ritt. In fact, these writers work with Martin Ritt several times. They did one of the best Westerns of the mid-60s called Ombre with Paul Newman. Fantastic film. And while they were writing Ombre, they talked about their process, which was they wrote about eight to ten pages today, and eight to ten pages a day. And as a couple, a working couple, they would review those pages at the end of the day and they would edit those pages and they would do that every day until they had a finished script. So, you know, I don't know how long it took them. It took them a couple of weeks or whatever. Probably did a final read through, but they did not do tons of rewrites on the screenplay. They edited it as they go along. I am not a big rewriter. You know, God, people are going to say that's a sin. Ernest, Ernest Hemingway says every every first draft is shit. So um, I don't submit first drafts. I write and I edit as I go along. I do a lot of editing. I use the Grammarly AI tool. And I mean, I'm constantly going back through and editing and editing. So I'm rewriting as I'm writing. I uh, had a couple scenes I eliminated halfway through. They were really good scenes. Nothing wrong with those scenes, but I felt like Eh, these are really not essential. They're non-value added. So I was rewriting as I wrote. And I do. Uh, I did two uh, uh, machine read-throughs, and I did one read-through myself. So I did three read-throughs at the end of the line. I try to pick out any words that sound awkward. I listen to the dialogue. I listen to the narrative. And if it's there, it's there, you know? Um, my attitude is I, I try to present a script that I think is good enough that if somebody wants to do a film, they're going to tell me what the hell they want to change on the screenplay. This happened to me a couple years ago, and the draft I had written, I had to make very few changes for the producer. And then when the film got made, the director came in and did things. I wasn't being consulted because I was not on the set, and my first response was not good, but in seeing the final project, I was lucky because most of what the director did actually improved my work. That's another thing in the real world of making films is that, and this includes even projects where, that didn't get made in films where I was working with producers, a director I worked with, I wrote three drafts for, uh, any of these filmmakers. Everybody wants to be a raconteur and everybody wants to get their hands on the work, right? Everybody wants to touch the work and say, oh, I'm part of that process. I'm, part, I, you know, I did part of the writing process. I don't know what it is about writing the script. It's supposed to be the lowliest job in the filmmaking process, yet everybody wants to get their hands on the material. So anyway, I've been rambling on. I'm looking at my timer. This is a 13 and a half minute video. And it's my first installment of the Screenwriting Industrial Complex. And we covered a variety of topics. This is Philip E. Hardy from Screenwriters Talking Shop. Have a wonderful day.